Salutations, mini mathematicians. Welcome back to working on module eight. We're going to be continuing with our transformations and we're looking at rotations today. But with 8.1b with rotations, we always rotated about the origin. So we had certain um, rules when we were rotating and we also had um, some other things that were specific just for rotating about the origin. And today we're going to be looking at rotating about just a point. So our purpose, we're going to perform rotations given a center of rotation, not necessarily the origin. We're going to explain and justify why or why not a coordinate is or isn't the point where um, is the center of rotation, where all the pre-image is rotating to get to the image. And we're going to do that using distance formula, concentric circles, and or the Pythagorean theorem. So let's get started. Taking a look at 8.1b, I just want to remind you that when we have a center of rotation, the corresponding vertices like C and C prime are equidistant from that center rotation, which creates a circle. We did that with B and B prime to the center of rotation and A and A prime to the center of rotation. This rule is going to stay um, constant and hold true for all rotations, not just rotations about the origin. So here what we have is pre-image ABC is rotated 90 degrees clockwise around the origin to produce image A prime, B prime, C prime. And they're asking you, is this true? Why or why not? If it's not true, what point is um, triangle ABC rotated about? So what we're going to do is the first thing we can do is if this is a 90 degree rotation, we should have corresponding segments end up being perpendicular, meet at 90 degree angles. So if I look at AC and AC, A prime, C prime, I notice, well, we have a horizontal and vertical, so this could possibly be a 90 degree rotation. So I have some wax paper. You can use wax paper, parchment paper, tracing paper, a Ziploc baggie would even work to write on this. Um, I was able to find some Sharpies today, so it's going to be way nicer for you guys. Um, and it says rotated 90 degree clockwise around the origin. So I'm going to make the origin here. I'm going to put my points on my vertices, trace, and we'll see if we can rotate. Remember, a 90 degree rotation clockwise is the same as a 270 degree rotation counterclockwise. Okay, so lining these up, 90 degrees. Well, doesn't look like it. Does not look like this would just be a rotation about the origin. If it was a rotation about the origin, I would stand, still need to translate two units to the right. So we must be able to rotate about one point though, A, B, C, to get A prime, B prime, C prime. So one way to find that is you could guess and check and try to find where C and C prime are equidistant away, and A and A prime and B and B prime, but that would take forever. So the way we can do this is, so is this, no, we should answer the question. No, verify with tracing paper. So what we want to do um, is explain a little bit more about why it's not. And oftentimes, if we have a center of rotation, a lot of times the center of rotation, we call that O or R. Um, o for center of rotation. So let's label that O. And we're going to go a little bit more into deeper about why this is not a 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin. So no, segment OC and OC prime segment are not the same lengths.
Hence, the origin is not the center of rotation. And if we take a look at OC, I'm going to do this in pencil and OC. OC prime. We notice that this can, O oh, segment OC can be the hypotenuse of a right triangle with lengths one and three, where this is a hypotenuse of a triangle with lengths one and one, two, three, four, five. So obviously very different. We can also use the um, distance formula to find these distances and compare as well. So what we can continue saying here, hence the origin is not the center of rotation because corresponding vertices must be equidistant to the center of rotation. So let's go over how to find the center of rotation if it's not the origin. So we know it's not the origin here, so we need to find what it is. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to perpendicularly bisect segments connecting corresponding vertices. You might be like, what? Well, perpendicularly I mean, just means perpendicular, so it's going to be a 90 degree angle. And bisect just means cut in half. So I made a sandwich for lunch. I bisected diagonally my um, sandwich, the best, the best way to cut your sandwich, right? <laughs> so taking a look, um, perpendicular bisect segments connecting corresponding vertices. You're like, corresponding vertices, what's that? Well, that means C and C prime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these C and C prime. I'm going to connect A and A prime. And so what we're going to be doing is notice that C and C prime, I want to find the middle of it. To bisect means to cut 90 degrees. Sorry, perpendicularly bisect means to cut 90 degrees exactly in the middle, exactly in half. So you could find the distance formula, divide that by two, and then somehow measure this. Or the best way to do this is using the midpoint formula. So remember, the midpoint formula is just half, or the average of the x and the y's. So the midpoint formula between um, coordinates x1, y1, and x2, y2 is going to be x1 plus x2, half of that, y1, y2, half of that. Pretty simple. So what we need to find is we need to find the distance between C, sorry, the midpoint between C and C1. I think it's going to be somewhere around there, but let's um, check. So C prime coordinate is 5, 1. And C is negative, oops, negative 1, 3. Taking a look then at finding the midpoint, that's going to be 5 plus negative 1, half of that, and 1 plus 3, half of that. Well, 5 plus negative 1 is 4, and half of 4 is 2. 1 plus 3 is 4, and half of 4 is 2. So 2, 2. Excellent. And from here, we need to cut this in half. 
and we need to cut in half at a 90 degree angle. So I can kind of eyeball it. I'm going to make this a dashed line. If you have a protractor of some sorts and can actually measure 90 degrees, that's amazing. Um, and then you can also take like the corner of a piece of paper and kind of like line it up to make it look more perfect. So then our next one that we need to look at is A and A prime. So taking a look at A and A prime, notice A has the coordinates of negative six, three, and A prime has the coordinates of five, six. So then the midpoint is going to be negative six plus five divided by two, three plus six divided by two. And here, notice, well then we end up with these fractions, negative a half, four and a half, so it's not going to be as accurate to graph them. Negative a half and then four and a half, well, it's going to be somewhere close to here. But that's not really the best um, way to do things with estimating with math. It's not going to be as accurate. So I'm going to look at B and B prime, which I probably should have started with because it is a horizontal segment. And whenever you have horizontal or vertical segments, well, it's going to be the best. Notice that B is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and B, oh, negative 6. I believe B prime is all the way at 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 6 plus 8 is going to get you 14, so we need to go over 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, to cut this in half and double count on the other side just to check, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then from here, of course, vertical and horizontal segments are the best because we can bisect them perpendicularly, cut them in half, and cut them exactly at a 90 degree angle without much stress. And notice where they intersect. Where these perpendicular bisectors intersect is your center of rotation. And if you wanted to double check that with your midpoint over here and make a 90 degree angle, notice we would indeed intersect at the same point. It's magic, math magic. So this point of intersection is actually one negative one. And we can double check this with our patty paper. So instead of that red cross, I'm going to use this silver one. Whoop, that didn't work. And if I put this here, I'm going to go 90 degrees clockwise. Bum ba bum. Ta da! It's perfect. Wonderful. So let's answer the question that it was asking us. Um, if not, what point is pre-image ABC rotated about? The pre-image or triangle ABC is rotated 90 degrees clockwise or 270 degrees counterclockwise about the point or the coordinate one negative one to create triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, so that is the beginning of our lesson. We're going to examine the pre-image segment PQ. We're going to rotate segment PQ 9 degrees counterclockwise with the center of rotation at 0, 4. 
So we're first going to go to 0, 4. So notice we are on that y-axis. We can do these a number of ways. What we can do is we can use our patty paper. Cut this one real quick for us. And I'm going to put across where zero four is. Put my vertices at P and Q. And then connect them. Go back and be like, we're going counterclockwise 90 degrees. Notice that went oops off so instead of going counterclockwise because that doesn't match being there let's just go clockwise must have been a typo in the in the lesson so we're still going to go around zero four we're still going to use p and q to make p prime q prime but this time we're going to go clockwise Perfect. So we notice that, line this up again. We are going to be at, looks like two, two for our P prime. And is it negative two, four, looks like? For our Q prime, grab a tool to draw our line for our beautiful image. So we did that, and it says use slope to verify your image is a 90 degree rotation. What they mean by using slope is to double check that your image and pre-image create perpendicular lines. Because remember, since we rotated 90 degrees, they should be perpendicular to each other, which means their slopes are, should be opposite reciprocals. So if we look at the slope of just segment PQ, notice segment PQ is a decreasing line. So we're going to have a negative slope. And we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, maybe we'll go over and down. One, two, three, four, and over one, two, three, four, five, six, just so we don't run into our P prime, Q prime. So rise over run, we have negative four, six, which of course we're going to simplify to be negative two thirds. And then the slope of segment P prime, Q prime, if we take a look, we make a right triangle to find our slope. You can also say what the coordinates are and use your slope formula if you wanted to. Remember your slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or change in y over change in x. From here, 1, 2, 3, 4, right 4 and up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 6. Slope is 6 over 4, which is 3 halves. So we can verify, yes, this is a 90 degree rotation because lines are perpendicular. Slopes are opposite reciprocals. Opposite reciprocals. Cool. So now what they're asking us to do is use corresponding vertices P and P prime to verify the center of rotation is at 0, 4. To verify something has a center of rotation at a given point, we're going to use the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem to show that they're equidistant. So what we're going to be looking at is we're going to use P, which is at 2, 6. And our center of rotation, I'll just use the C for center of rotation at this point, which is 0, 4. To find segment PC. 
So segment PC here, what we're going to find is, and we're, I'm going to use the distance formula. Remember the distance formula is the square root of the change in y or x first. Sometimes I use x, change in x squared plus the change in y squared. So PC is, segment PC is the square root of 2 minus nothing being squared plus 6 minus 4 being squared. So we have 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is 4 plus 4, which is square root of 8. And of course, we want to simplify, simplify, simplify that radical. So that's 2 square root 2. To see if they're equidistant, we have to check P prime. And P prime is at, like we said, 2, 2. With our center of rotation, which is at 0, 4. So we can find segment P prime C. I'm going to skip a few steps since I went in detail about how to find this one. So here we're going to have 2 minus 0 squared again plus 4 minus 2 squared again. 2 minus nothing is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. So the square root of 8, which we know is 2 square root 2. So we can say that yes, corresponding vertices are equidistant. Cool. So I'll go over again that midpoint. If I didn't know that this uh, point was the center of rotation, I was asked to find it. What I can do is I can take the midpoint of the lines that connect the corresponding vertices and cut them in half at a 90 degree angle. So P and P prime, and this works really well because we have um, a vertical segment here. And this segment is one, two, three, four. So this halfway point, the midpoint of P, P prime is right there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that segment P to P prime in half at a 90 degree angle. So you're gonna see, I'll use a dashed line for this. We have this nice horizontal line. Then if we take Q to Q prime, we make this line and we would need to find this distance. So Q, Q prime, Notice Q is at, here's five, six, seven, eight, two. I guess we're just gonna find the midpoint actually of Q, Q prime. I misspoke, not the distance between them. Q is eight, two, and then Q prime is at negative two, negative four. So our midpoint, midpoint, is going to be 8 plus negative 2, which is minus 2 divided by 2. 2 minus 4 divided by 2. 8 minus 2 is 6. Half of 6 is 3. So we're getting some nice numbers, no decimals here. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So we're going to go to 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 1. Oh, really happy it's on my line. I'm going to cut this line perpendicularly, 90 degree angle. And notice that where these two dashed lines intersect is indeed at our center of rotation. So maybe that makes a little more sense at this point now that we looked at it again. Cool, let's keep going. So what we have now is we're given a pre-image triangle ABC, and we need to rotate this pre-image of triangle ABC 180 degrees counterclockwise. And we all know if we're rotating 180 degrees, 
This counterclockwise means nothing. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise direction, doesn't matter. Halfway around the circle is still halfway. Um, and we have, oh, they're giving us our center of rotation. That's so nice of them at one comma one. Label the image A prime, B prime, C prime. Awesome, we can do this. So we can use our patty paper. Um, you can also make concentric circles since we know that center is at one, one. So I guess our center of rotation is equal to A, which that means that's also equal to A prime. Because if you're zero distance away from something, if you're equidistant, you're still zero distance away from something. Okay, so A and A prime are both zero away from our center of rotation. So I'm just putting equal as an A prime there. And now what we can do is we can grab a piece of patty paper or wax paper, tracing paper, if you will. And let's see how my red Sharpie works today. And C, B. I'm not going to worry about labeling A because A and A prime are same, same. I'm going to go 180 degrees. So that's going to be 90 because I'm waiting for the vertices to line up. And then one more will be 180. Ooh, looking nice there. Looking nice. So it looks like C prime is going to be at negative 2, 1. Negative 2, 1. For my C prime and we could it looks like my B prime is going to be at negative sorry 2 negative 5 and just to double count that um, because I want to make sure I'm doing a good job and sometimes my sharpie is a little off so I'm going to count 1 2 3 4 5 6 is the height so it should stay the height because remember rotations, reflections, translations, they all create congruent shapes. Same size, same shape. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. So I know I did a nice job here. Connecting these. Again, pencil, you guys, I know it doesn't show up as well. So just make sure it's nice and dark. Or if you need to, after you make it nice with a pencil, just go over it with a marker. C prime, B prime, just underline that. Okay, so uh, we did that and we remembered our labels. Don't forget your labels. From here, use the slope for segments B, C and segment B prime, C prime to verify your image is 180 degree rotation. So let's take a look. If we look at the slopes of B, C, what do you notice? Well, BC is a vertical line, so it's undefined. That is a number over zero for rise over run. And if I look at the slope of segment B prime C prime, I'm noticing, oh, I guess I looked at B, C, B prime, C prime, they're both undefined. Number over zero. So notice we are making parallel segments. Equal slopes. Um, and that's really important. And notice we can say, see the same thing going on for B prime, A prime, and AB, that these have the same slope. And then we also have this horizontal segments for A prime, C prime, and AC, because remember, 180 degree rotation, we're gonna have parallel segments of corresponding side lengths. Cool, so we're good. Um, use corresponding vertices B and B prime to verify the center of rotations at the point one comma one. So if they're asking me to use these specific vertices and to verify that point, they're asking me to use the distance formula. 
Uh, we could also, if you had a compass, show that they lie on concentric circles with the center of rotation being the center of the circle. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, but first, let's use our distance formula. So we're going to use B to our center of rotation. And since we already have a C here, I guess we can use R for our center of rotation. Um, we'll just call it R. We'll define it up here as R. So B, R, where B is 4, 7, and R, R, our center of rotation is 1, 1, means that our distance is going to be 4 minus 1 being squared, 7 minus 1 being squared, 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 squared is 9, 7 minus 1 is 6, 6 squared is 36, 9 plus 36 is 45. And think to yourself, does 45 have any perfect square factors other than one that goes into it? Yes, yes it does, 9. So remember, since this is 9 times 5, square root of 9 is 3, so we have 3 square root 5. So fingers crossed, we're really hoping that we're going to get the same distance for B prime R. So segment B prime R, B prime has the coordinates of negative 2, negative 5, and our center of rotation, same coordinates, 1, 1, which means our distance we're going to have Negative 2 minus minus 1 turns into a plus 1 being squared, plus negative 5 minus 1 being squared. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative 2 minus 5. This is the 1. Negative 2 minus 1, sorry, is 3. Negative 2 minus 1 is 3, you guys. Hopefully you were yelling at your computer. This is bar. It's not minus minus. It's just minus. Thank you. I appreciate it. Great job. <laughs> Taking a look. Negative 2 minus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. Well, oh, same, same. So square root of 45, which is 3 square root 5. So we just proved that, yes, 1, 1 is your center of rotation because the coordinates are equidistant. Let me see if I can. There you go. A little bit bigger. So we can say yes. Both corresponding. Vertices B and B prime are equidistant three square root five units from the point one one. And hence the center of rotation. Cool. So let's take a look at number four. Number four, we're going to examine our pre-image of our quadrilateral ABCD. And so here it is, ABCD. We're going to rotate ABCD 90 degrees counterclockwise. And this one really is counterclockwise with the center of rotation at negative two, negative one. So negative two negative 1 is going to be right down here. Since I have a C, I'm just going to call it R from the beginning, center of rotation. I'm going to grab a piece of tracing paper, grab my Sharpie, it's my center of rotation, A, B, oops, that's a D, <laughs> C,
use something to hold this steady. Double check. Nine degrees counterclockwise, so clockwise, counterclockwise. 90 degrees. Should be like this. Looks good. So this is going to be at negative 1, 2, 3. Negative 3, 2 is my C prime. Negative 3, 2 is my C prime. And then notice from C to D is 1, 2, 3 units. 1, 2, 3. So we end up at negative 3, 5. For D prime. Um, A, we can count 2 to the left and 1 up. For my A prime, and B should be 1, 2, 3 up for my B prime. Trace it with pencil, make it look pretty, and then maybe highlight it. So that shows up a little better. Okay, so label, done. Use a slope for the segments to verify the image is a 90 degree rotation. So they're saying that since this is a 90 degree rotation, what should the relationship between the slopes be? You're right, 90 degree rotations means perpendicular. So we should have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. Let's take a look. Well, if I look at the slope for segment AC, AC is increasing, so it is a positive slope. Sorry. Um, and we're going up to right one, so it's a slope of two. And if I look at the slope of A prime, C prime, it's decreasing down one, right two, so that's negative one half. So we can say yes, 90 degree rotation. Slopes are opposite reciprocals, hence perpendicular. Perpendicular lines. Cool. Now what they want us to do is use the corresponding vertices A and A prime to verify the center of rotation is at the point negative two, negative one. So again, we're gonna be using our distance formula to do this. So go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can figure out the distance between our center of rotation in A and our center of rotation in A prime. Okay, let's see how we did. You should have gotten that yes. 2, negative 1 is the center of the concentric circle, and it looks like we used R here, so I'll change that to an R. Segment A, R, and segment A prime R, they both are 5 units away. And what we can also look at is we can look at these concentric circles, A prime and A, C prime and C, B prime and B. Um, they all lie on these circles where the center of the circles is at negative 2, negative 1. You can also see that up above on number 3, where we can see these concentric circles with the center being the center of rotation, 1, 1. And that, again, is just proving that corresponding vertices are equidistant from the center of rotation. Awesome. Let's keep going. So number five is asking us, can the rotation below be described as a rotation 90 degrees clockwise with the center of rotation at the point negative six two? Explain why or why not. Use the properties of rotation and numerical evidence to justify your answer. So the first thing we can look at is if the segments are gonna be perpendicular to each other. We see that segment BA and B prime A prime are indeed gonna be perpendicular because we have vertical and horizontal segments. Same can be said with C, B, and B prime, C prime. So that's good. Now what we need to see, they're using O for the center of rotation, is at negative six, two. So from here, what we wanna see is we wanna prove that they are equidistant. 
Well, one way we can do um, equidistance or show distance is using the Pythagorean theorem. So if I made right triangles here and here, notice that we are going over one up two, over two up one, so that the hypotenuse of both of these right triangles are going to be equivalent. We can do that same justification with O to B, I'm going up one, two, three, four, and over one. And if I look at, sorry, to B prime to B, we're going up one and over one, two, three, four. And we can show that again with C. Another way we can do that is using the distance formula. So for our explanation here, Can this be described as a 90 degree rotation clockwise? I'm going to um, start up here just because it's a little bit of um, words. So yes, we said yes. The image is a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. with center of rotation at the point negative six two. So what we could do is we could draw concentric circles. Um, if I drew those circles and lined up notice A and A prime are there I lined up on B B and B prime are on the same circle. And if I lined up C, C and C prime. And again, I know you don't have a compass, so don't feel like you needed to draw those circles. Um, but if we did draw these circles, drawing, three concentric circles with center negative six two we can see corresponding vertices are equidistant to negative six two. So you could have also used the distance formula. So using the distance formula, between A, which is at negative eight, three, and they used O for the center of rotation, so so will I, negative six, two. We'll end up with the square root of, change in X's, negative eight, minus minus six, that's time it really is a minus minus, plus three minus two squared, is equal to square root of five and the distance between a prime and o a prime being negative five four o being negative six two end up with the square root of 
negative 5 minus minus 6, 4 minus 2, which is also square root of 5, proving, again, that negative 6, 2 is the center of rotation. Because corresponding vertices are equidistant from each other. And I guess we should address in our writing we talked about in the beginning. This is a 90 degree rotation. Corresponding segments are perpendicular. And we can also use the mapping from last lesson about what happens with our, oh, I'm sorry, those were the questions. What happens with your um, rotations and thinking about that. So, um, x comma y is going to go to, and you can think about what we are going, but those were for, um, about center rotations at the origin. So these ones are gonna be a little bit different. So we actually cannot use that mapping. Okay, so number six, number six. Um, taking a look here, we're gonna find the angle of rotation, including direction and the center of rotation for the pre-image line PQ to the image P prime Q prime. So taking a look, we know that we want to find, um, if we connect our corresponding vertices, we want to find what's halfway in between them. What's really cool about this problem is that since P and P prime actually intersect here at five comma zero, if we did the distance formula, we'd notice that five comma zero, sorry, the midpoint formula between Q Q and Q prime and P and P prime, we'll find that this is actually the midpoint. And you can count if you go down two over two, we're going down two over two. So these hypotenuses of those right triangles we can create um, are um, congruent, making this the midpoint, which makes this the center of rotation. So we know the center of rotation is at five, zero. And now what we can look at is thinking about what is the angle? What's the angle of rotation? Notice these segments are parallel. If you have corresponding segments that are parallel, this is going to be a, that's right, 180 degree rotation. So this is a 180 degree rotation. And you can say clockwise or counterclockwise. Put counter in parentheses there so I don't have to write it out twice. Counter or regular clockwise. Clockwise or counterclockwise. About the center of rotation. Five comma zero. Cool. Nice work, y'all. Let's keep going. Last page. Number seven. Find the angle of rotation, including direction, and the center of rotation for the pre-image ABC to image A prime, B prime, C prime. Well, if we take a look here and we connect our corresponding vertices to find the midpoint, And we can bisect those at a 90 degree angle. So from C to C prime, that distance is two and it's vertical. So I feel really confident about um, cutting that segment in half at a 90 degree angle, perpendicular bisector. Then if I take a look at 
What do you guys think? A, a prime or BB prime? A, a prime looks a little shorter. So I'm going to look at A, A prime. And if you want to pause the video and keep going and then check in with me, that's a great idea. From here, so we know that A is at 1, 2, 3, 4, so 0, 4. And A prime is at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2. So that midpoint is going to be 0 plus 4 and 4 plus negative 2. So 0 plus 4 is 4, half of 4 is 2. 4 plus negative 2 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we're going to go to 2, 1. And remember that is just our midpoint. And now we need to cut this in half perpendicularly. So if we kind of look at this, looks like, remember we want to kind of intersect this dashed line down here, making perpendicular line with this yellow line. Ooh, that looks good. So I think that our center of rotation is going to be about here. So let's check and see if vertices are equidistant. So we can go over one, up one, over one, down one, C and C prime. Over one and then up one, two, three, four, five for A. Down one and over one, two, three, four, five for A prime. So looking good so far. And then getting to B up one, two, three, over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's see if we can get to B prime by going over three, one, two, three, and going down seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yay! So now what we have is we know <clears throat> that we have a center of rotation at, what's that? negative one, negative one. And we need to figure out what direction we are rotating in now. So we can always use patty paper to um, figure that out. So some tracing paper. Now that we have our center of rotation. A, B, C, we can count if we go straight there, oh, one rotation and that's going clockwise. So we can call this a 90 degree rotation clockwise about the center of rotation. Negative one, negative one. Some of you are like, well, I didn't go clockwise, Mrs. Barr, and that's totally fine. If you didn't go clockwise, maybe you went counterclockwise. And remember that a 90 degree rotation clockwise can also be called, it's equal to a 270 degree rotation counterclockwise. counterclockwise. So those are the same. And maybe if you weren't using some tracing paper for this, you were like, oh my gosh, take a look at those line segments. Corresponding segments are perpendicular. And we did that throughout the lesson. We were investigating those slopes to remember those. That if we have a 90 degree rotation, we're going to end up with perpendicular corresponding segments. Awesome. Last problem. Find the angle of rotation, including the direction and the center of rotation for the pre-image A, B, C, D to image A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Okay. Well, taking a look just at my corresponding segments, I'm already noticing 
oh, that this didn't get labeled as D. <laughs> so make sure to label that. I'm already noticing that they are parallel. So automatically I know this is a 180 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise because halfway is halfway no matter which direction we go. Um, so I'll put counter in parentheses clockwise. about the center of rotation and this is where it starts to be fun um, dropped my straight edge so let me get that so if we take a look at connecting some corresponding vertices you might notice something pretty cool. D and D prime. C and C prime. This is one of those rare gifts that it looks like all of the corresponding segment segments intersect at one point and they intersect each other perpendicularly bisecting which means indeed the center of rotation is that coordinate it's magic so 180 degrees counter or counterclockwise or clockwise about the center of rotation and that's at one three awesome thank you so much for joining me today i really appreciate all your hard work Module eight, it's so great. Video bar, out.